Hi, I'm John Verparian, and this is Beyond the Game. Tonight, we're going to take a look back at 2014 and decide who really should be the person of the year. And when it comes to the sports business world, who better than Evan Weiner, good friend of the show, to tell us his thoughts on uh, who should be bestowed with this uh, glorious title. So, Evan, welcome back to Beyond the Game. Thanks, John, and I hope you had a good holiday. Oh, it was it was a good holiday. Uh, Thank you. Um, man of the Year, Woman of the Year in sports. Well, you know, they were the usual suspects, Time Magazine, nominated Roger Goodell as one of the eight people, persons, mm -hmm. man or woman of the year for their Time Magazine, man, woman, persons of the year. I wouldn't touch Goodell in that category, and um, Time Magazine decided a more worthy uh, recipient were the people who responded in West Africa to the Ebola crisis, and that's about right. Uh, Adam Silver, is finishing up his first year. He had not 11 months uh, as NBA commissioner. He had a very up and down year with Donald Sterling and Bruce Levinson later on, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Bud Selig got $6 million as a goodbye present from Major League Baseball for all of his years of notorious service. Going back to the 19, early 1960s, when mm -hmm. he was the largest stockholder of the Milwaukee Braves, when that team moved to Atlanta in 1965, it should have been the end of Bud Selig in baseball. They didn't want him. They passed him over in expansions in 1968, uh, passed him over even selling the Seattle Pilots. It was supposed to go to Lamar Hunt. He got it out of bankruptcy, uh, and somehow Bud did good, and so good he's getting $6 million a year. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would think that uh, focusing on the commissioners of the uh, leagues would be a good place, and uh, you really have made it a nice uh, assessment there. I don't know whether any of the team presidents or owners of clubs come into into mind. I mean, uh, I could think of one who used to be an owner out in L.A. who uh, certainly got a lot of newsprint, uh, so to speak, for 2014. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, no, there wouldn't be any owners, but uh, the guy who I think is the sports man, sports person of the year has nothing to do with sports. Uh, and you could even question his journalism integrity. It's Harvey Levin from TMZ, which is a gossip. I mean, mm -hmm. basically, they play got you with celebrities and going in and out of cars with the paparazzi. But uh, if you look at Harvey Levin and what he did in 2014, he brought both the NBA and the NFL to its collective knees. He had the Ray Rice video from mm -hmm. when Ray Rice uh, hit his girlfriend in the Atlantic City elevator, hotel elevator, uh, last February. He had the video. Uh, he had the audio from Donald Sterling. And uh, he played it on the websites. Now, you would normally not associate Harvey Levin with sports. In fact, the, the only tangible evidence that Harvey Levin was ever involved in sports was when he was a reporter at Channel 2 in Los Angeles, and he was covering the O.J. Simpson crime, uh, the murder case, uh, back in, yeah. what was it, 1994. Uh, so he went on to People's Court, and he's doing the TMZ thing. Uh, I don't know how he got the Ray Rice tape. But he got the Ray Rice tape. It was put up there for the world to see. And that is really the first time you have ever seen NFL domestic violence. First it was on his website, and after it was on the website, it went viral all mm -hmm. over the place. And um, the NFL knew it had a problem on its hands. Um, he got a two-game suspension, and a subsequent video came out. And Roger Goodell, who is the guy who makes the decisions in terms of discipline, uh, was criticized the two game suspension, the Ray Rice. Um, well, it was four game suspension, four, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it, it initially no, was two, two games. games. Yeah, 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 and yeah, then it became four that. games. Yeah. And uh, that opened up a whole can of worms um, about Goodell, about the integrity of the discipline system in the NFL, about other people who were arrested like Greg Hardy. Uh, Ray McDonald was picked up um, on a charge, which was ultimately dropped. Um, he was benched. And then there was Adrian Peterson, which is not domestic abuse in terms of a spouse or a girlfriend, but this was abuse of a child. He was suspended for the entire year. The NFL, as of right now, as we are sitting here in 2015, they think they have the framework in place for discipline. 
I'm not sure if they do. The Players Association has to sign off on it. Um, even Congress got into the act. And Congress doesn't get into the act because a sports writer writes something. It doesn't get into the act because there's something on ESPN TV. When they got involved with the steroids issue, it was Canseco's book, and it was Jose Canseco on 60 Minutes talking about his book, that all of a sudden Congress said, you know what, we should be uh, looking at the steroids issue in um, baseball and other sports cuts, uh, subsequently. Um, so Harvey Levin, in effect, did what many people could not do to the NFL, where the NFL was brought to its collective knees and had to call a timeout, had to go back to the sidelines and figure out what's our next move. And so Levin becomes a central character, but he drops out of the story. He has the video. He is just the guy who puts it on. And he had. And Harvey's background is as an entertainment lawyer. And you may not like the show. I'm not a journalist who particularly likes the ambush style. Uh, it's not what I would do. I grew up in the 1970s with people like Sam Hall and Mike Eisgrau browbeating me and Peter Carey in college, who was a Sports Illustrated uh, editor at the time, who really browbeated me in college, gave me a C. And I said, you gave everybody else an A. He said, well, you're the only one going into the profession, so you better learn how to handle it. Uh, and he was really, you know, Peter, if you're watching Peter, you know, thank you. Um, but uh, I've never seen anyone. And thank, thank a professor for. <laughs> well, you've you, you've done you've done that. To, you're, you've oh, been okay. in college, okay, okay. but he but he really you know banged it into me. This is yeah. what you got to do. Just because you know something doesn't mean you know something. So it's not something I would do. But I applaud Harvey. He had that story. Nobody else had the story. It was just somebody. Uh, it was a complaint against Ray Rice. He might have hit his girlfriend in an elevator. Atlantic City Police were handling it. That's the way it usually is in the NFL, and the NFL looks at it and then hands out a suspension. Here you have the visual proof of what happened. You know, in obtaining that uh, video, uh, I, I am amazed that he came away with it or, or was able to get his hands on it because the NFL is known for a very good investigative system in place. I mean, a lot of ex-police officers, ex-FBI, work for the NFL to check out player personnel. Uh, any thoughts or any ideas as to You know, how, I've, how I've always wondered about leagues. Um, the New York Islanders come, for example. Uh, John Spano tried to buy the Islanders. He checked out. You know, the guy's still in jail for another fraud. Um, these guys do somehow slip through. And uh, I've always wondered about just how the Alex Rodriguez case. Uh, with Major League Baseball and Major League Baseball security, um, who broke the story? The uh, the uh, new the New Times of Miami or the Miami New Times, a weekly paper. Uh, baseball didn't have it, but that changes the NBA, and it changes the NBA in two ways. Players became socially active. Um, the LA Clipper players talked about striking a playoff game or boycotting a playoff game. Uh, and uh, I would have liked to have seen that because I would have liked to have seen how that would reconcile with this collective bargaining agreement, having a wildcat strike when you know that in 2017, there are just many owners just itching to lock these guys out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would have been quite interesting to see if these guys decide not to play, how the CBA would have sprung forward and how the league would have gone on from there because... There are guys itching to lock the players out in 2017. So that could have been a prelude to what's going to happen in 2017. Um, so the players became socially active. Uh, then you had Bruce Levinson in Atlanta, who is an owner with the Hawks, who sent out an email. And he wanted to know why the Hawks crowd was too yeah. black, uh, too hip hop, and why white corporate Atlanta was staying away from Atlanta Hawk games, didn't stay away from Atlanta Thrasher games. That team moved to Winnipeg, and he kind of had envy of the who was the crowd composition of the hockey, the NHL team, which lost a few years ago, the Atlanta, Thrash, Atlanta Thrashers. Um, Levinson basically told Adam Silver before he faced any kind of discipline, um, I'm getting out. Now, was it racist or was it something that he was just pointing out? Um, nobody has ever really spoken about it. The, it's gone away quietly. The Hawks, his portion of the Hawks, 
is up for sale. But that is what has become in the NBA. The other thing is, with all the stuff going on with Ferguson and also Stanton Island, NBA players became socially aware and started protesting during Donald Sterling. And that protest has continued now with uh, I Can't Breathe shirts, mm -hmm. with LeBron James uh, and uh, Derrick Rose and others. So NBA players are har harking back to the late 1960s when athletes were socially active uh, in terms of social issues. And uh, so Harvey has even kicked that up. Yeah. Well, going back to the 60s, we're talking about Bill Walton, UCLA. He participated in student demonstrations. Yep. Muhammad Ali and uh, the Vietnam War, his uh, call to, uh, you know, I have no quarrel with the Viet Cong. So um, it is interesting that it, it's this is in, now occurring. Yeah, you know? it's interesting because um, I think there was a, a player at Manhattanville College, if you remember, yep, a sure. woman player. I a woman basketball name, player who, who turned, turned her back her. during the national anthem yeah. as a protest against the Iraqi war. And I know that uh, that was, what, 2003. And I know that she was criticized heavily for that. Um, athletes don't necessarily get socially involved. Um, Michael Jordan is the, is the biggest example when Harvey Gant was running against Jesse Helms. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the history of Jesse Helms. I'm just going to say Harvey Gant was an African-American businessman uh, in North Carolina running against Jesse Helms, who um, was a segregationist back in the day. And uh, somebody asked Michael Jordan, who is from North Carolina, who are you supporting? He said, I'm not supporting anybody. Republicans buy whatever brand he's selling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as we go into 2015, are we going to see athletes – uh, put in their contract uh, that they don't want to speak to the Harvey Levins of the world. And what I mean by, uh, by that is, look at Richard Sherman last, uh, last yep. year. <laughs> One word terse answers to the, to the well, media. Well, it was Marshawn Lynch. Oh, excuse yeah, me, Marshawn Lynch. Lynch yes. yeah. All right, I apologize to Mr. Sherman. It was Marshawn. No, That's Mar right. Richard I knew, Sherman doesn't I knew, shut up. I know. <laughs> I knew it was a Seattle Seahawks yeah. somewhere there. But uh, the point being, are we going to see more athletes communicating through their own personal websites and Twitter? Uh, what impact does that have for the future? What's, uh, what do you say? Well, the... Uh, in every contract, you have to cooperate with the media. Um, and Marshawn Lynch was doing that by giving word, one word answers. Uh, you know, guys, some guys embrace it. Some guys love to talk. There are other guys who, for whatever reason, don't like to talk. But as part of the contract, you have to promote the team and the sport. And, um, it's like um, Fuzzy Zeller told me many, many years ago. In fact, it was up here in Westchester. We were talking when they had the Westchester Open. And we're talking about just the PGA and why mm -hmm. golfers are always cooperative. And they're very cooperative golfers. And he said back in his day, you had to face Arnie and Jack in the clubhouse. And Arnie and Jack would give you the speech. You are an independent contractor. You are responsible for yourself. But you also represent me and don't mess around with my stuff, which, you know, mm -hmm. building golf courses or whatever they were selling. You do what's right for golf. You do what's right for yourself and everybody will make money. Um, there are some guys in, in all sports that don't want to talk. They really don't want to talk. But it's in the contract. You have to cooperate with the media. And, um, you know, you look at a guy like Boomer Esiason. Um, he was doing commercials all over the place because he talked. Uh, mm -hmm. Phil Sims once told me, he said, I didn't know how to get commercials until Boomer told me how to. How do you do it? Talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else is uh, your predictions for as we come into the new year? Let's look into your crystal ball, Evan, and, and tell us what's, what's going on, uh, whether it be expansion, whether it be Well, you want to go sport by sport? What, whatever you okay, feel let's, comfortable let's, with. Let's go you know? sport by sport. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, Stu Sternberg lives in Rye, as a matter of mm -hmm. fact. He might be able to watch a show. He probably does. Uh, we, we, I'll we tell him to watch it. There. Yeah. I will tell him to watch it. Um, Stu has a problem in St. Petersburg with the stadium. They want to get out of the stadium, and they want St. Petersburg to let them talk to other areas, and he will pay 
an indemnity to St. Petersburg if he leaves. Now, you're talking about he's got to play in 2015. Even if he starts talking to anybody, uh, it won't be until 2016, 2017 at the earliest that he could build a new stadium. And then it takes about two to three years. So you're talking about a five-year process here. Um, I would think there are going to be more talks between St. Petersburg and Stu Sternberg and the Tampa Bay Rays to let them out of that lease and maybe pursue Tampa. And we don't know if Tampa is really interested or not. Uh, I do know one thing that uh, Stu a couple of years ago said because of the New Jersey Nets, what happened with them moving to Brooklyn, that New Jersey is far less desirable for a Major League Baseball team than it had been say about five, six years ago when people thought, well, maybe New York could support the third baseball team. Oakland's still going to be looking for a stadium. Uh, in the NFL, um, we understand that Roger Goodell and his fellow, and the fellow owners, he's not an owner, but he's in charge of the owners, uh, won't let St. Louis or Oakland or San Diego leave for Los Angeles in 2015. Now, we could spend four shows talking about Los Angeles, so I'm going to try to boil this down to about 90 seconds. Uh, the NFL had a deal with Al Davis to stay in Los Angeles in 1995. They were going to move to Hollywood Park by 1998. There would be the first 10 years the Raiders would host five Super Bowls. They wouldn't be playing, obviously, mm -hmm. but they would be hosting the five Super Bowls. In, sense to, uh, in a sense to help pay down the debt of that Hollywood Park Stadium. And the NFL came around. They were going to be co-sponsors of the stadium with Al. Uh, they came around and said uh, that five Super Bowls is down to three. The three was down to one. And, oh, by the way, we're moving a second team in. You're going to get a year head start. You're going to sell all the seats. You're going to sell all the signage in the place. And then somebody's going to come and share it with you. That was the deal breaker. And they moved to Oakland. 1999. They were granted a conditional expansion team. Um, if they got funding for a stadium and start in 2002, they never got the funding. Houston got the funding. So we'll see what happens in Los Angeles. But uh, right now, the NFL is shopping around Los Angeles looking for a community to do what Irwindale did for Al Davis. Here's $10 million up front. Guarantee you keep it. We'll try to finance the stadium. They never did in Irwindale and the Rock Quarry. Um, so they're shopping around looking for somebody to come up with money for a stadium. Uh, NBA at this point, lockout in 2017, very possible. Milwaukee uh, Bucks looking for a new arena in town. Seattle is nothing's going to happen there until 2016. That's the next time that they're going to talk about an arena. Um, NHL. I'm skeptical about Las Vegas. It's not because of the betting. They can handle the betting. There's betting all over the place now. Um, I don't think the market is size is good, and there's no TV market, market size, and what's the corporate market, casinos? So. Well, you know, NHL, let's just go back to sports. So let's go NHL, and then we'll jump back to the NFL. A NHL, we basically have a, uh, a need, I think, a fix by the owners for that expansion fees. So I, somewhere you got to put a team, whether it be What's most likely? Vegas? Is it could be Hamilton? To, no, Hamilton's out. Uh, Hamilton. Okay. Quebec but, City. But Quebec right City, now, right. Canada yeah. has a major problem. As we tape the show, the Canadian dollar is about 85, 86 cents. And when the Quebec Nordique and the Winnipeg Jets moved out, it was in the 60s at that point. So the Canadian currency goes like that. And two years ago, it was a buck two. Mm -hmm. You know, they were their their currency was higher than us, buck three when I was in Halifax. Um, Quebec City doesn't have a corporate market. They may have a TV market in, in mm -hmm. terms of Bell Communications. may put up a lot of money because they're upset that uh, they didn't get the NHL Hockey Night in Canada uh, franchise. Bell, watch, you're a baseball guy, so mm -hmm. watch Bell carefully in Montreal because if there is a move back to Montreal, Bell has the kind of TV money that could put Montreal in play. Of course, the currency is a problem right now. Yeah. And the NFL, uh, Roger Goodell, seems to have a, uh, a, a predilection.